So a guy ended up snagging on this 2005 TTR 125 LE for a pretty decent price. But the caveat is the motor's locked up. Now I've never seen a TTR with a locked up motor. I've worked on some with zero oil in them. Still run, still running away. So I'm pretty curious as to what failed on this one. Stick around, we'll take a walk around it and start our typical Diag process. It's not in terrible condition. Someone deleted on the inner workings of the muffler. Always great for performance. Tires are in pretty good shape. Brakes work. Brakes work perfectly. Electric starts not working. The old pod filter routine. A carburetor full of ethanol, I'm sure. Ooh, fake carbon fiber levers. That made the purchase price worth it right there. Check the non-existence of the oil. Yeah, non-existent. There really is a pretty good chance that if you run an engine without oil, it's going to fail. I guess at this point there's no reason to lollygag. We're going to have to get this engine out, up on the bench, and get it apart. Find out where our failure was like deja vu around here. So where we last left off, we went from this to this. Now how did we get here? Well for some reason, while editing the video, all my footage of taking this apart, taking the engine apart, got lost. It's unfortunate because it definitely takes a lot of time to set the camera up and adjust everything for the shot and try to explain what I'm doing as I go. So uh, that's lost. Um, why it does this, I don't know. It's happened to me before, but I'm going to have to try to figure out some kind of uh, redundancy to ensure that this doesn't happen again. So I'll go ahead and show you where we're at with this engine, what we came up with. And I think I'll just spend a little bit more time with the assembly. So that could potentially help you out if you're pulling the engine on this type of bike. So what we ended up finding was somebody has taken this engine apart. Clutch cover was off. It's been gooped up pretty well instead of using a gasket. The transmission shifts through all the years perfectly fine. And in fact, the connecting rod and piston are fine. They're tight. Everything looks good. Now the electric starter. When we took this off, somebody has cut the, somebody has cut the gear off of it and put a washer on it. And I was like, that's kind of strange. So as it turns out, the one-way clutch, when I took this thing apart, it just fell into a million pieces. And there's still some remnants of it here. So, and the kickstart mechanism was not installed properly. So, these two things caused the kicker to not move. I went ahead and measured the piston and the cylinder. Although the cylinder looks like it's in really good shape. Still got some cross hatching in it. And the piston actually looks like it's in really good shape. Well, the piston itself is already undersized it's too small and the cylinder although having some decent cross hatching is oversized it's too big so i'm going to go ahead and replace the piston and the cylinder starter 
starter clutch on the inner clutch pressure plate there is a bolt broken off and I'm going to attempt to extract that so this is basically where we stand with our TTR project so the engine is not locked up I'm also going to go ahead and take the head apart just go through that like I normally do clean it up put a, some new valve seals in it make sure everything's in good shape now it's a great thing that the engine is not locked up it actually spins nice and free so dodged a little bit of a bullet there got some parts on order when they get in we'll put this thing back together all right got the cylinder head cleaned up a little bit here we're gonna go ahead and take it apart and pull our valves out change our valve seals and check the valve seats and the condition of the valves I have a good feeling that everything's gonna be in pretty good condition Getting these rocker arm pins out can sometimes be a little bit of a pain if they're stuck. I find the easiest way to do this is with an M6 by 1.0 on a slide hammer. Once you get your two pins out and your rocker arms are loose, we can go ahead and slide our camshaft out. You might have to wiggle the rockers around a little bit. Now it's a little bit of a weird setup that Yamaha's got, but you cannot take these rocker arms out while the valves and valve springs are in. So we just need to push them inside so we can get our valve springs apart. Now we can get the valve seal out. I've just got a screwdriver with a bent over end. You usually just grab it. Now there is a spring seat on the bottom of this. Once you take the valve seal off, that can fall off. So be careful when you turn this upside down. If you're going to wash this up real good make sure you take these out so they do not get lost next we're going to want to chuck our valves up in our old drill and we'll just give her a spin see if there's any bends or a strange movement in the shaft or on the head this one looks good even the wear pattern on the valve itself looks really good right in the center of the valve face so we can go ahead and reuse these valves. We don't have to do any kind of valve jobs or anything like that. But we will clean them up a little bit with some triple or quadruple zero steel wool or a red scotch bright pad. Once you get your head all cleaned up, put a little bit of oil on our spring seats. Let's get those sitting back in. Now we'll put our new valve seals. Easy way to do this. Small screwdriver that will fit down in the valve guide. Put it on there. And once you get it down in there, you just use your fingers and pop it on. It's always going to be recommended that you replace your keepers, collets. Sometimes they call it when you do this. Next we want to blue lock tight this. Oh, all out. Had to pick up a new bottle of blue lock tight. Anybody out there, can you guys tell me why they changed the blue lock tight bottle to red? 
Did it cost more to make a blue bottle? I don't get it. So now when I go to grab for my thread locker, I actually have to read and do calculations in my brain as to what I'm getting. If they just made a blue bottle, I grab blue Loctite. Do not get any of this thread locker down in that bearing. That's a warning. A stern warning. This stuff will literally lock up an oily, greasy bearing. Once we get this engine put back together, we'll go ahead and adjust these to their proper tension. Alright, so next up is experiment time. <laughs> I ended up getting a brand new piston kit with a cylinder for $32.06 shipped. And believe it or not, this thing has a better warranty than your OEM parts. Not to say that they're going to last as long as OEM, but 32 bucks. This comes with a one-year warranty. Comes with a set of piston rings. Wrist pin. You gotta be kidding me. They even throw in a set of valve seals on this bad boy. Sir clips. Look at that piston. The cylinder's heavy. And down in the bottom of the box, there's more. They're actually giving you a top end gasket kit. I'll be shocked if this thing even starts. Now, even though this thing is a complete kit, I'm still going to check my piston ring end gaps. And we can do that pretty much anywhere in the cylinder because we know the cylinder. Or at least we assume the cylinder is going to be no taper and no out of round. Right, another reason why this thing is super cheap. It comes with no instructions. Uh, not that it's difficult, but you have one black ring, one silver ring. They're both the same thickness. Uh, where they go in the piston, don't really know. It does not tell you. So the only thing I can see is the photograph from the ad shows the silver then the black then the oil control ring so i'm going to assume the black one is going to be the second ring also when i put the rings in the cylinder and i measure the gaps the silver one is tighter than the black one and that corresponds to oem's design of the top ring being tighter than the bottom ring however they are both a little bit too tight so i'm probably gonna have to file the ring get uh ring ends so i'm probably gonna have to file the ring ends just a little bit to get them a little bit spaced out more so this thing doesn't lock up what happens is as all this assembly heats up these rings are very small and thin so they're gonna heat up faster than everything else now granted the aluminum will help draw some of that away but if these if the gap is too close in the cylinder and they get hot and they expand, it will close that gap up and will lock this thing right up solid and break everything. So we definitely want to open this gap up a little bit. This top ring is supposed to be between 0 0.15 to 0 0.30. 0 0.15 millimeter. So that's our minimum ring gap. And it looked tight, but now that I'm measuring it, it actually is okay. Let me check the second one. These have marks on them. So this one says RN. The mark, sometimes it'll be a dot, sometimes it'll be an arrow, is always going to face up. Second ring, 0 0.30 to 0 0.45 millimeter. So 0 0.30. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I am impressed. They looked a little tighter. So this is the front of the cylinder, front of the engine, going towards the exhaust. 
We want to look on our piston. Most of the time your piston is going to have a mark, an arrow or something that's going to show you which way towards the exhaust. So this is how we're going to install our piston. And this is going to show us our orientation of all of our rings. So we want to follow this to AT, as they say. Now we got our rings installed in the proper position. We're going to keep the orientation, flip this cylinder upside down. This being the front exhaust side. And our piston also with the arrow facing front. Oil up the cylinder. Let's see if we can get these rings in. Sometimes it's easier to do this prior. putting the cylinder on we want to definitely watch our oil control rings make sure that they're not binding or stuck and we want to oil everything really well we get our piston pin started and we can just drop this right on top of the motor I already put one of the circlips in on the other side so it would stop the pin from coming through all we want to do now is throw a rag over our crankcase and we can install our second circlip this way it doesn't fall down inside now make sure that's totally snapped into that little groove and watch out these things will go flying at this point now we'll work our piston the rest of the way in the little guide pins a little tight Going into the cylinder. Since the dowels are on the head, I'm going to go ahead and use the bolts to keep the gasket in line. And there she goes. Don't forget our chain guide that has to go in now. We'll go ahead and drop our head bolts in. A little bit of oil on the threads, a little bit of oil on the washers. So on this here, the head bolts, the large head bolts, they're calling for 16 foot pounds. And we're gonna tighten those in a cross pattern. Next, we wanna get our camshaft timing set up. Now we put the cylinder on top dead center before we put the head on. It may have moved a little bit. Definitely wanna look at your Woodruff key on your crankshaft. When it's on top dead center, in other words, piston at the topmost position of its travel, this key should point directly up the engine or right at the camshaft. Another way I like to check it is to put a screwdriver or a straw down inside the spark plug hole. You can feel the top of the piston, and as you rotate the crankshaft back and forth, you can actually feel it kind of going down and up. You want it right or to the top of its travel, and it actually feels like kind of loose, like no drag at this point it may be easier just to lay the engine down so they don't give you a lot of room and the chain wants to fall down inside the engine this will help keep it from falling anyway Certainly hope you don't have to do this too many times. So we're still on top dead center. Obviously, I need to go over one more notch.
our line is marked up with our head and we want to keep the front of this chain tension so just stick your finger in the hole and push on the chain guide and keep it tight and just make sure it's good drop of red blue loctite Take the 10 millimeter bolt off the back of your cam chain tensioner, use a little small slotted screwdriver, turn it clockwise until it draws this rod in and it should lock in place. So you can put this together. Just stick your screwdriver in there, turn it anti-clockwise. And that will tighten your chain up. Now what I like doing at this point is doing a couple of full rotations on the engine, make sure nothing's binding, and then recheck our timing marks. We want to do this in an anti-clockwise direction from the left side of the engine. In fact, we want to avoid turning the engine backwards at all at this point now that all this is hooked up. Everything felt real good. We'll get her back on top dead center. Our cam mark still lined up perfectly. Next, we need to set our valve clearance or valve lash. And the way we do that is we need to set a clearance between the valve stem and our rocker arm. That much play right there probably wouldn't even start and it should be rattling like crazy. This thing takes a tiny, tiny wrench. And I have some small wrenches, but even my wrenches are like, nah, bro. So I'm basically just going to turn this by hand until I get it as tight as I need it to be. And then we'll snug down to lock nut. So our valve clearances are on the intake side is 0.08 to 0.12 millimeter. As long as it's in there, you're good to go. These are adjusted cold. Your exhaust is going to be 0.10 to 0.14 millimeter. So we'll just set it to 0 0.10 on the intake that's right in the middle. We'll put our feeler gauge in there. Already we're too tight, so we'll back that off. What we want to do is just be able to have this slide just barely dragging. Now when you tighten this down, it may tighten this up a little bit. So you just have a very light drag. So 0.13 does not go in. 0.10 is loose, so we're within spec on both of these now. Simple as that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the clutch assembly back together. I installed the oil filter, the main drive gear, cleaned our screen. Now before you put the clutch basket, two washers go behind it. You have a concave spring washer and then a thick heavy washer. The concave spring washer is going to go with the concave facing down towards the transmission. You have a spacer. And you can put your inner clutch plate, or pressure plate as they call it. Now, since our old clutch looks like it actually caught on fire, smells like it too. Look at that, it's a beauty. Got a new clutch kit, springs, frictions, steels. I'm gonna get these frictions sitting in a bath of oil for about a half an hour. There's one thing we want to pay close attention to is down the center of the transmission, there is a push rod that will push on the outer clutch hub. There's this little adjuster, but between that and here is a tiny little ball bearing. If this falls out, it's going to cause you a lot of issues trying to get your clutch adjusted properly. There it is. And of course, this one was missing out of this engine, and that certainly could have caused this clutch burning up if they couldn't get it adjusted properly. At this point now, we'll take our oil-soaked clutch plates 
and put them in friction steel, friction steel, friction steel. I had one bolt that was broken off in the pressure plate and I had to extract that and I was lucky it came out. Tighten your bolts in a cross pattern incrementally. now so we can put the left side back together I gotta get this starter clutch replaced that came apart and the way we do that obviously you're gonna pull your flywheel off this is the outer race of the clutch so here's a new clutch with all the bearings in it So when you take this thing off the outer race you notice that it's flat here and it's got a little notch here well this notch is what holds the cage with all the bearings in this when you bolt this back together has to go down into the flywheel this will keep this cage from coming out I need to get this over to the parts washer Definitely going to want some blue Loctite for this. Magneto's got some pull to her. The trick with these is you got to kind of turn them one way until they roll in. You can see it'll only go one way and it locks up the other way. New starter, put a little bit of grease on the o-ring, I prefer dielectric grease but any kind of grease would work. Well we know the kickstarter works, let's check to make sure the electric starting system works. Sounds good.
get all of your motor mount bolts in and started before you tighten any of them up. Now at this point we have to adjust our new clutch so we have the proper amount of free play up on the lever and that's going to require taking this clutch cover off. I bolted it up on the bench temporarily. I want to make sure the electric start was working and the kickstarter was working properly before I buttoned everything up. So at this point now we're going to take this off. We're going to do a quick simple adjustment on the clutch. I wish Yamaha would have put a little access cover or something here that would have been fantastic make it a lot easier to do this so right now i've got my clutch cable hooked up going up to my lever as you can see i have no free play in fact this thing is tight 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 this will do fine minor adjustments right here so what you want to do to start off with is get your adjustment out a few threads and obviously it's there's no free play this thing will just slip like crazy if you don't have the LE version, obviously you don't have to remove the starter. What you'll need for this is a 10 millimeter wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver. If you look at the center where the push rod comes through the outer clutch hub, there's an adjustment there. So what we're going to do is, see obviously it's just spinning right now, it doesn't even have any tension on it. Just break that loose and what we want to do is turn the center with the Phillips head out until it's loose and now we're going to slowly turn this back in until we take up all of our free play on the lever and while holding the center rod steady tighten up your lock nut At this point now, I can turn this back in until I get the proper amount of free play. Should be just about a half an inch at the end of the lever. And that's it. This is a good point now to go ahead and check to see if we got spark or if we have electronic issues. Well, all right then. At this point, got the engine reinstalled, got most of the stuff buttoned up. Still waiting on a chain. For some reason, I ordered a 420 instead of a 428 chain. It happens. I got the front brake hydraulic system cleaned out, flushed out, replaced the front brake pads, got the new air filter in and all that stuff. So it's time to get some non-ethanol in this thing and see if she will fire. Now this bike does have an aftermarket carburetor on it. It is a Mikuni, but don't know what to expect. Definitely have a little bit of a fuel leak. The needle in the seat on this thing are probably bad. It's definitely leaking. I went through the carburetor and it was super clean, but it seems like there might be an issue. So, got oil in it. Let's see what happens. Well, it runs. It definitely sounds pretty good. It's definitely going to need some carburetor work for sure. 
I actually have another carburetor. I might just throw it on uh, OEM carburetor for this thing. But what I need to do now is just recheck the oil level, make sure that's all topped off where it needs to be. And I need to run a few heat cycles through this engine, burn off some of this assembly oil. Hopefully my chain will get here pretty soon. We can get this thing cleaned up, washed up, and uh, take it for a quick ride. I want to thank all y'all so much for watching, for subscribing, for liking, for commenting. Appreciate you, and we'll see you on the next one.